Today, we are editing Jackie, a black and white border collie mix. In this photo, we got a little bit of backlighting from the sun, not perfectly backlit, but we still get that nice rim light in this image. Approaching sunset, just taking advantage of that little bit of golden hour and that ability to get that effect. And I think it turned out nicely, even in this raw image. First thing I'm going to do is press R. That's going to select the crop tool. I'm going to do a 4x5 crop. Make it match all the other images on the website. And I'm going to bring it in. And I'm going to use that rule of thirds grid. Center me up so the nose is on that right third there because the body is postured a little bit more perpendicular than I like. I prefer more three quarters, but I think that this did pretty okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and accept those changes. I'm going to press W. That's going to pick the white picker tool. And I'm going to use that for my white balance. Pick a nice white spot on the fur. And that's going to get it a really strange kind of color. I'm struggling to pick out the white balance here. So I'm going to pull the saturation all the way up. And that's just going to make it more obvious. So we clearly have a bit too much magenta. Right about here is probably going to be good. So I'm going to reset my saturation and see where that lands me. And I think that's pretty close. We're going to tweak the white balance a little bit more on our subject anyway. So I think that gets it good enough for the background at the bare minimum. And we'll adjust our subject as we see fit later on after we do a few more adjustments. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the auto function. That's going to flatten out the image and kind of make it more generally appealing, but less controlled and selective. So the subject becomes a little bit less obvious just because everything is nice, which isn't exactly what we want, but it is what we want for the background. So I just hit the auto tool and I let Lightroom do the work there. Hit Shift W. That's going to bring me over to this masking tool and I'm going to select the subject. And it did a fine job selecting the subject. I'm going to go ahead and use this dog contrast curve. And all this does is it adds a medium contrast curve, sets texture clarity and dehaze to 7 and sharpness to 17. And for these black and white dogs, this actually does the job fairly well. And I'll say that in this one, I'm going to go ahead and hit J and look at my over and under exposure. So we're pretty close. We have some underexposed parts of the image. And that's actually one of the issues with the backlighting. We can take back a little bit of light here. And that's just going to help us have that dog stand out a little bit more in the frame. And I'm just going to press Y and that's going to give me the before and after. So that way I can see all of the changes I've made all at once. We're pretty close on the white balance here. However, since this is a black and white dog, one thing that we could do is we can actually take down the saturation and it makes the dog a little bit cleaner. I can take that down quite a bit and I'm not worried about losing any of the impacts of the color just because the color there is more distracting than helpful. So I'm pretty okay with it. And then what I want to do is I'm going to do an object selection right on the eyes. And with those eyes selected, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up their exposure about as much as I can. Clearly, this is too much. Sometimes I'll just overshoot it and then I'll bring it back down until a point where I think it looks normal, just like laser focused on the eyes there. And so I think that I can probably get away with this before it starts to look fake. And saturation, I'm going to bring this up a bit. They're brown eyes, so I just want to make that color pop a little bit emphasized. But I'm also going to warm them up a little bit. That adds that tiny little bit of color pop that I think makes them stand out, especially against black and white dog. Unfortunately, they're not very bright just because of the way that we decided to take this shot. So they're not going to stand out too much, but they are going to stand out a little bit. And for right now, the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that leash in order to do that. I need to go over into Photoshop. I'm going to do that with a Command E. And here we are in Photoshop. And right now I have the Remove tool not selected, so I'm going to press J. If I didn't have it already, it's in this panel over here. And I can right click and I can pick it out of that panel along with some of those other tools. But really, I'm just looking for this. I'm going to use Command Plus to zoom in. And I zoomed in a little bit too much. And use Command Minus to zoom out. I'm going to use my right bracket. And that's just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm going to trace right over this leash. And I'm just going to do the whole thing. And that did a really good job of removing the leash and not leaving much in the way of evidence behind. Maybe if you look close enough, you could probably tell there was a leash there. I'm going to use Command Plus. Since I already have the Remove tool selected, I'm just going to go close in on my subject. I'm going to look for just unpleasing things. 
over here that could be distractions. So like this little eye booger right here, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that for him. Just because the dog's not having a good day doesn't mean they shouldn't look their best. It's picture day after all. So we want to do our best to look best. Command minus. And I'm just looking at the dog overall, making sure that there's nothing else I want to do in Photoshop. Our background is really nice, so I can go ahead and keep that. And as far as I can tell, there's no other distractions. So I'm going to hit Command S. That's going to save the photo and magically populate it back in Lightroom. I am going to go to the effects tool. I'm going to do a minus 15 for the post crop vignette. That's just going to darken the edges of our image and bring the viewer's attention in towards our subject, which is ultimately what we are trying to showcase here. And I'm going to hit Y so you can see these changes as I go along. And now I am going to the color mixer tool and I'm going to take those greens. And because it's a black and white dog, there's no dominant kind of yellow or brown color in this dog. So I feel pretty safe to take those greens and make them a little bit more yellow. And that gives the background a less distracting color. Green attracts the viewer's attention a little bit. It's just a little bit more of an attractive color. So by taking that and moving it towards yellow, yellow while being pleasing is not quite as distracting. That's the justification there. And that's about as far as I want to take it. They're, they're still allowed to be green in the image. It's just I really want to make it look more like autumn in that sunset golden hour look because it is actually golden hour. So that kind of makes sense. And then just take those distractions out of the background because we don't need to be distracting anyone now, do we? So I'm going to hit Shift W. That's going to bring me back towards my mask tool. I'm going to hit background mask. And with this and the continuous effort to avoid distraction, I'm going to set saturation of minus 15 and just mute those yellow tones in the background a little bit more. I don't really need to do too much more just because it's not a distracting color to begin with. But I do want to take a little bit of that saturation out. One thing that attracts the eyes is saturation. So the fact that we have a black and white dog is working against us. But the other thing that attracts our eyes is areas of contrast and especially exposure. And in that we win because we have this white dog. We did have him facing away from the sun, but we also created an outline of him while we did it. That's the nice thing about that backlighting and that illumination pattern is it outlines, literally outlines your subject which makes them stand out even more in the frame. But I'm not done yet. I'm going to go ahead and another thing that the eye is attracted to is sharpness. Or you could think of it as being hesitant to look at something that's unclear, right? We prefer clarity with the thing that we're looking at. So I'm going to take away some of that texture, some of that clarity, and I'm going to take away some of that dehaze or I'm going to add haze. And that's just going to make that background slightly less pleasant to look at. Without making it ugly, I'm not trying to ruin the image, but I am trying to keep the image focused. When you add haze, you inherently add a little bit of exposure. So I'm going to go ahead and take a tiny bit of exposure away just to compensate for that haze there. With that, I think I'm mostly done editing the background as an individual layer. I'm going to add another mask and I'm going to use a linear gradient. And I'm going to bring this up and from the bottom of the foreground. I'm going to hold shift as I drag this up. That's going to keep it nice and flat. And I'm going to let go. And now all I'm going to do with the foreground is I'm going to darken it. And this is one of those things that nobody will ever notice. I would be shocked if somebody said, you darken all your foregrounds in your images. Because it's just not a thing that anybody really looks for. However, it is something really nice that keeps your viewers' attention from getting distracted by let's say the brightest part of my images right here is actually the bottom right hand corner. So if I didn't darken the corners and I didn't darken the foreground, this area in the bottom right would be one of the brightest parts and somebody's eye could get hung up here on this hideous piece of out of focus grass instead of on my beautiful subject. And why would I let that happen when I could help my viewer and I could say, hey, no, look at the subject. And speaking of helping my viewer, I'm going to add a radial gradient. and I make this big, soft radial gradient. I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit in order to make this a little bit bigger, even, and a little bit wider. I'm going to invert it. And I'm going to hit Z to get the picture back in full frame. I'm going to do a custom vignette centered right on our dog's nose. And so that's going to, once again, have the effect of saying, hey, viewer, 
Look at the dog. The dog is the subject. He is beautiful. Take a look. And then one more thing that we could do to help our viewer even more is add another radial gradient centered up right on that nose, a circle. And we're going to go ahead and spotlight our subject a little bit. And it's going to be one of those kind of subtle things. You don't have to do too much of it, but it really does have a pretty big effect in making the face brightest and most interesting part of the image. And we do have this backlit subject, so we're not trying to ruin that effect. We're not trying to hide that effect. We're just trying to make sure that our subject is still easy to see, despite the fact that he is silhouetted against the sun. And now I'm just examining the image and I want to make sure that there's nothing else I really want to change about it. Jackie had a pretty decent intake photo, actually, but this is still a better photo. And so I want to make sure that this is the best that I can do in post-processing with this photo. And for me, maybe you are more talented. Maybe you might take back the background a little bit. You might take the exposure down. You might take the saturation down because maybe you are still getting hung up on those colors. And if you are and you're looking at this image and you think it needs to be toned down, let me know in the comments. That's your dog.